a year in the best current operational practices track. Uh, just by a show of hands, how many of you, is a, this is your first time in a BCOP track? Okay, good. About three quarters of you. Well, uh, fantastic. So a little bit about what, uh, what BCOP is about. Uh, you know, we recognized certainly over the course of years in lots of different operational forums that people give presentations uh, or you can search the web for things and as soon as you get information, that information becomes effectively stale, right? These are things that continue to change and evolve and, and our practices get, uh, get better over time. Um, there's no real place to get information vetted. So if you, for example, go, you know, Google for how do I whatever, what's the best way to do X? You don't generally get an understanding of the sources or how it's been vetted by subject matter experts or if it's still currently in use uh, as a best current operational practice. So a few years ago, we decided to uh, try and get um, the communities together and, and actually have a process by which we can document best current operational practices, get them written by subject matter experts, and get them vetted by the community. The idea behind BCLPs is to keep them current so they're all living documents. Anybody in the community can participate, either as a subject matter expert or uh, someone who just wants to know something, so you can appeal for information on a, on a best current operational practice, uh, or you can participate as an author, or even just shepherd a process to try and help put the right people together and help get things documented well. Uh, so this has um, grown quite a bit over the years. There's now uh, BCOP uh, tracks and all over the world, and uh, it's, we've been starting to work on some, some global coordination, but we'll get into that a little bit later. <laughs> so what this is going to be today is um, we're going to go over what's, uh, what's currently being worked on, uh, it, it, and, and each of the respective shepherds are going to come up and talk about where they're at, where they need help, uh, and how you can participate, where you can read information on the topic, uh, et cetera. Uh, at, here at NANOG, we have a BCOP committee. So this is an, an ad, ad hoc committee that we started uh, a year ago, year and a half ago, something like that. Um, we had been doing these as, uh, as, as small groups in, uh, in a track, but we became an official ad hoc committee uh, as of about a year and a half ago. So Chris Grundeman and I uh, chair the group, I co-chair the group, or, and, uh, and then we have some members of the committee that uh, actively participate in helping reach out to the community, uh, help the authors and subject matter experts, help the process of getting things vetted and eventually become ratified. This is open to anybody, as I said. Um, so you're, of course, you know, encouraged to participate in the process and encouraged to uh, help get best current operational practices documented for yourself, for the community, for people that you want to be able to hand references to to say, you know, here's how this is done best. It's great for, you know, e even internally when you say, you know, this is how the world does something and this is how we do it and, and here's a reference and here's why we should, we should follow this process or something you can hand to your customers, et cetera. So on today's track agenda, we have uh, five BCOPs that are in progress. One is on uh, DDoS attacks, one is on uh, eBGP configs, we have a public peering exchange, Ethernet OAM, uh, an anti-spoof uh, best current operational practices document centered around the concept of how to uh, deploy BCP 38. Uh, and then an update for what's going on with BCOPs around the world, as well as um, to go over the current appeals, looking for people to help uh, fill in some gaps and, uh, and an open mic. So with that, I'm going to start with uh, Yardiel to give an update on the DDoS attacks. And by the way, feel free to get up and come to the mic at any time. Uh, this is supposed to be an open dialogue. All right. Here we go. Taller, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my name is uh, Yariel Fuentes, uh, Net Geeks. Um, we started the DDoS attack. Uh, where are the slides here? Okay. There we go. This is the right arrow. Here? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm shepherding this VCOP. Uh, with some of the SMEs there. Um, they're kind of like different people from different uh, service providers. Uh, and there is, I put some other, some other pe another person actually on the, on the, the contributions. Uh, he's been like wanting to help us, uh, but he was pretty busy actually fighting DDoS attacks and things like that, and he couldn't contribute. So uh, uh, 
so I decided to put his name because he still wants to contribute. And you know, the idea was this is a living document. So anything that you can provide to the community so we can all grow and re really learn, that, that was the idea. So I wanted to give him credit for, for at least trying to help us on that one. Uh, oops. What do we start? Uh, what is the purpose of this? Really, it's really to share practices which are perform in proven environments uh, on what to do before actually you get attacked, during the attack, and after the attack. So we decided to actually do it in a methodical way uh, from grassroots. Actually, just what do people do when they get attacked? We hear so much, you know, theories or can you buy this equipment? Call it Harbor Networks, or you can buy this solid service from Akamai, or whatever you do. Uh, but you don't have control. You feel like you don't have control, and it's always the answer is buy something, right? So the idea is here, well, let's just try to break it down into, you know, these components on a timeline. What, what, what is a good practice to do before you actually get attacked? So we, we, we come out with some sets uh, of what to do there, what to do what, during the attack, and the most controversial part probably what to do after. Um, you feel like, okay, I was a victim, I gotta victimize somebody, or I gotta tell somebody, you know, let me call the police type of thing. Uh, let's see. Um, check out the, the draft that we have currently. That's where all the B cops are there, and the DDoS uh, B cop is there as well. Yeah, uh, okay. If for those of you who cannot read it, it's bcopnanoc.org. I guess the red is not very good. Um, but check, go to that website, bcop.nanoc.org, and you'll find it there. It's under drafts, okay? Uh, why do we need that? Um, you know, I think pretty much we all know why. Uh, DDoS attacks are increasingly getting more and more intense, bigger. Uh, today, I just heard that uh, the biggest one was around 100 gig. I thought the biggest one was really around, most of them are around 20 gigs, and it only lasts like 10 minutes, nine, you know, five minutes. Uh, but they're getting way bigger than that. 400 gigs. Well, there you go. <laughs> Who gets another one? 500 gigs. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's going, it's going big. So the idea is, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, there are some of the some of the cloud providers. They're probably the biggest victims, and they're the ones who can contribute the most. So, if any of you um, know of numbers that can help us, that would really contribute to this big up, that'll be great. Um, so, uh, but the idea again, I want to emphasize the bullet number number two. There is really practical, something that we're all sharing on how we have done it. Whether we messed it up, that's fine. Tell us about it because we want to hear about the mistakes so others don't, don't make the same thing. So, so it's not about to get it only right, but also trying to see why it didn't work, right? Kind of like a collection of post-mortems. That's what we want to do. Uh, what to do? So let me just give you a quick outline. I made some points here, but give you a quick outline of how we, did, uh, we divided this on the, on, the, on the timeline. So this is some of the things that you want to do prior that we came up with. Uh, definitely viral filters and ACLs are you know, do your best friends. Uh, you, you'll be surprised um, the intensity of most of those DDoS attacks are still very simple. DCP base, UDP base, that, that type of thing, uh, like intense. So it's just showing you how bad you're doing your ACLs, <laughs> probably in V6, right? So um, always pay attention to your open recursion for internal DNS. Mitigate, um, identify, mitigate most of the open relays. Uh, consider DDoS mitigation subscription services. Obviously, we want to be vendor agnostic. We want to. We don't want to recommend do you know buy this or do that. But definitely, there are some some of those guys have have products. Even some of the ISPs out there, um, they have they made all this DDoS attack a whole service uh, product for them. You know, talk about cable, cable and wireless. You know, British Telecom. All those guys have this as a service. Uh, I forgot to mention the big ones, BCP 38, BCP 84, and obviously RFC 2827. So all we'll know about that, you know, I kind of say that that kind of falls within the firewall filters, 2827, RFCs, and uh, BCP 30, um, 84 is probably also on the multi-homing firewall filtering area. So, but just to throw the numbers that we all know and love. What to do during the attack? Well. You're basically just collecting info at that point, I guess. 
Uh, the idea is they're, they last very, very, you know, they're very fast. They're getting even faster now. So the idea is to be able to collect eno enough info at this point that you can actually identify what the heck happened here, right? So you'll be able to correct it. Somehow you'll be able to do like, oh, my service subscriber that I'm, you know, paying some money to, that they can actually help me out with this. They'll, they'll also help uh, you collect information. So hopefully you'll correct and fine tune your filters and all the different uh, mitigation services that you have to, to deal with this. Um, what else do we have here? Let's see. And what to do after the attack? Some of the things that we obviously say, just go and look at your file filters and ACLs. You may want to probably have most of the answers. Uh, if you don't, then probably try to identify what, what was the open, what was attacked actually. That, that will be very useful, obviously. And some of the controversial points, you probably, if you guys are in the not not uh, emailing list, you'll see some of the some of the most controversial pieces, right? Should I, who should I call? What should I tell? Uh, the FBI guys collect information in some sites. There is a Denver office that actually gets, collects all this info. Uh, some of our SMEs also mention IC3. They have, uh, they, they're interested in that info. That uh, it doesn't mean that they're gonna do anything about it. They just wanna probably collect it. But um, that's something that probably can, that should be done as well. And obviously, if you can share it with the community, that definitely will help a lot of us and will stop some of the bad guys on the messing our work, right? Um, some of the contact that I think we're still missing and the big cop and we wanna do it. Uh, so we're looking for participation from all of you guys. Uh, definitely we want to be, what are the least effective or not effective methods that you guys have used or that we've used that you think that, you know, Try to stop, hey, that's it, that's a dead end. Don't go down that path, that's not good. Uh, I heard a couple of ones. They were very much, uh, I guess you would call it um, equipment vendor specific, like we would call them bugs, right? But uh, if you have any that is will be worth collecting in the BCOP, that'll be great. Um, and if you found any legal or law enforcement agencies, I think there was even a, an email thread going on a few days ago talking about some guy was already angry. Oh, how can we stop these guys so they don't get, um, they don't keep doing the spamming? So, but nobody answered. <laughs> Basically, the answer, the, the result of the email thread is nothing. <laughs> um, what else do we have? And if you, there was another suggestion about doing that on the BCOP, start educating people a bit about what, how, how the DDoS um, are evolving, how they're growing how they're getting to the 400 gig that somebody mentioned down there, how I've been able to do that. You know, that, that's a real persistent DDoS there, that it's amazing. Uh, so any, any comments that you guys have are welcome. We have, uh, uh, we've been working, oh, I should, ch I should just jump in here. Uh, if you're interested in DDoS or DOS attacks, we're not talking about statistics, we're talking about what to do and how you actually stop it so you can help the community. That's really the goal here. Um, do you have any real world experience with DDoS attacks? Have you been a victim? Awesome, so you can help us out to see how, how you were attacked, how we can actually improve the BCOP here. Um, if you're interested in helping us, so please get involved. Um, the one, one thing that we like to do with the team uh, that we have with this MEES uh, that we've been doing is all through email. So, you know, you don't, we don't need your real time. You can. Do it whenever you have time. You send the email to the group and we kind of grow from there and the discussion might start or corrections or documents and we start go working from there. The idea is not to intrude into your timing, okay? And uh, contribute as little as you can, that's fine too. And the more voices that you have, the better. I think there was uh, a cloud provider, uh, Brian, uh, DigitalOcean, who's being attacked a lot and he's gonna help us out too. So we're planning to like start finalizing this now but we're really looking forward to his input into the BCOP, so hopefully, hopefully helping us. Questions, comments on this BCOP? All right. Yeah, and for all of you with the laptops or whatever, you're, you're more than welcome to pull up the site. All of these uh, drafts are, are online at bcop.nanog.org. Oh, there's apparently a logo off the main Nanog, not Nanog page you can click on as well. 
Uh, and uh, now we're going to have uh, Bill Armstrong on uh, EBGP PCOP. Hey, y'all. So we've got the EBGP configuration BCAP. And um, pretty much the, the goal of this BCAP is uh, to just document BGP, like EBGP peering. We all do it. Um, we all know people who've done it. And we all did it for the first time at some point. Can you not hear me? Is that better? OK. We all did BGP at some point for the first time. And um, I would bet probably everyone in this room had a scenario where uh, things went pear-shaped at some point uh, because of something that a quick search on Google now would reveal like, oh, yeah, max prefix. That's a good one. Um, so really, um, you know, I, I kind of hit this here. The, re the, the driver behind this is we were going through to identifying different things for, uh, you know, different appeals to actually start, like, getting these things together. There was a, there was a thread in there that really um, highlighted this exact scenario that, like, you know, there's a, a multi-day thread. The guy's trying to turn up a new session. It's not happening. And, and really, it, it ended up coming down to a max prefix. Like, you know, he didn't have it set or he didn't have it wide enough, and his session would come up and drop. Come up and drop, and you know, no one can figure it out. Is it this, is it that, and it, max prefix. Very easy, obvious stuff. But if you don't know it's there, it's difficult. So we started this BCOP. And um, initially, you know, we used to have, uh, I, I, when we did our first presentation back in, where was it, Arizona, this was a, a bit more truncated. But we've been working on it. So um, we've got some data in there. Uh, we've got a handful of folks who've been contributing. and. Um, we try to stay vendor uh, agnostic as much as possible. When we get into the path selection, we, we figured it's worth highlighting that you know Juniper and Cisco do have a couple different knobs that, that matter. Um, and, and that's some of the stuff that I'd be interested in, in hearing from folks is how deep do we want to go into that? Uh, you know, I don't, I've never messed with Huawei's gear or ALU or anyone like that. And I wasn't sure if this was something that we really want to drill into and say, oh, well, and, but these guys, when you turn this one on, because I mean, ultimately, how many different devices speak BGP? And how crazy do we want to go with that? So I mean, you could go and grab the RFCs. You know, kind of here. Here's how it works. Hit hit the hit the easy ones, and, and that might do it. But Juniper, Cisco, big names. They they may not be bad ones to uh, to cover uh, off the off the bat there. Um, Oh no, that, that's that's the point of this session. No, um, so I don't know. Did everyone hear the question? Loosely. So, I guess the, Mike's question was, uh, you, is this going to be is the function of this thing to really hit the bases? So so that way, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can show up and and find this kind of canonical document that says this is what the world does when they consider turning up a peering session. And if so, should we cover all the bases? And I don't know. I mean, that, that's really, I think that's up to, you know, the authors of this thing. And, and those authors are, are probably everyone in this room, plus a bunch of folks on the list. Um, and I think we need to f see, you know, that, that's a scope question. How deep do we want to go? How, how wide? Et cetera. Personal opinion, Juniper and Cisco, safest bet. Most folks emulated one or the other um, or, or split the difference. You know, like weight, for example, in Cisco. Yeah, it's probably worth knowing, uh, particularly, you know, if someone's passing it, but I mean, you know, I don't know. That's why it's out there. So we've gone through, we've identified a handful of things. We definitely go into IBGP uh, because folks may very well be familiar with IBGP. Um, and there's a shock to the system when you go and find out that there's different things that matter when you get into the EBGP scenario or vice versa. Um, so it, it's good to make sure that we've got those, that kind of like the, the basic tiebreakers, what, what changes between the two. Uh, but the, the focus of this thing really is eBGP configuration and, and kind of basic peering. So we're not drilling into you know IXP specific stuff or or only transit. Um, it's really these are the things. So whether you're you're and we we've kind of abstracted the term transit to not just be a transit like if you're a service provider and purchasing transit from a tier one. It's really getting a zeros route or greater from someone else to get you to the next place. That that's how it's defined and that's how we, we drill in from there. And so we get, we've gone in, and, and as we get deeper into this thing and we get into the policy considerations, this is really where I think we, we need more feedback from the community. Um, because these things, 
everyone knows kind of like the general like bogon things that you probably ought to filter uh, where to maybe get some of this data from what you know what communities may be used by different providers things like that but I think everyone's probably got a different spin on how you want to handle these things and it'd be really nice to, to get some feedback from everyone to see what we can boil down and distill into like this is this is for sure the definitive ideal type of filtering we want to drop on the edge there um, and then we also, one of the things, and it's, this is also covered in one of Chris's documents there uh, that's, that's currently a draft. The, uh, I think the IPv6 peering one has some of this data, but it's, it's really kind of the, uh, the stewardship stuff. So you know, the IRR configurations, things like that, making sure you're you know, updating your data, getting RPSL going, all that. So that's fairly vanilla, and I think we, we've got that one covered, but it'd be good to see if there's anything that we've missed. And then the biggest one that we really need more info on which is right down here at the very, very bottom, testing and validation. So we've got some stuff in there. Um, I've gone through and grabbed a handful of scenarios. It's, it's definitely not complete. Um, and I'd be interested to see what folks use as a standard basis, like when I turn on BGP, these are the things that I validate uh, once it's up. Um, and then also we've got a handful of troubleshooting steps within there. Typical scenarios that, that happen, um, BGP establishment problems, you know, max prefix was, was one of the things I highlighted there. Um, EBGP multi-hop, you know, validation, how many TTL is too many TTL, th things like that, you know, checking that stuff out. L2, always validate that you have IP reach before you try to turn up up here. It can be really frustrating otherwise, that kind of stuff. So here's some of the participants right now. Um, I don't, I think I've only seen Nina around today, but um, so everyone's kind of throwing some stuff in. Similar to Yardiel there, um, Karsten Tommen, uh threw his name out there. I think he threw a couple uh, things at us early on, but you know, he did his diligence. He got his word out there, so yeah, we got our thing going. Yes. That's disgusting. Well, all right, cool. Okay. Well, I mean, that may not be a bad one to actually hit maybe under. Yeah. That, and that's kind of that in-between land between the I and E thing where like, yeah, no, yeah, okay. That may not be a bad one to throw in there to at least like identify what it is and the how come. Yes. Yeah, this is, that's yucky. I think it's uh, it's more the answer is uh, yes. I think it's really these practices are things that everyone ought to probably do. Some of the stuff is very specific to the provider space, but some of it's definitely specific to you know the the consumer, the CE side of the house, because the problems are the same. I mean, just because I do it on on gigantic routers and have to worry about you know multiple peers and transits plus customers doesn't mean that the customers don't have to deal with multiple peering partners and and additional you know external peers. It's the same problem, it's just, you know, and, and so when you get into some of the things like, you know, the filtering at the edge and, and stuff like that, you ought to have a Bogon filter in. You're, you can't trust your, your provider. You should be able to, but, you know, it could be a dude like me running that thing. You, you could be in a jam. So making sure that you've got that filtering in, to like, I don't want to accept 164 from you, ISP. That's marked as special. Um, so I, I think that it, it, the goal is really to make sure we've covered the bases. And, and the reason for my asking those is, with his question of confederations, you can see the scope going well beyond the small type right. of crammed on the one page here if you go too far with that. Because I would look at confederations and say, screw it, if they piss me off, I'll just do an AS override. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, and, and that is one of those things that even putting the, IG, I, I, I'll, even putting the IBGP stuff in there, it was kind of a question because like, well, we don't want to go down that rabbit hole because we really care about EBGP specifically. But it may not be a bad thing to at least say this is what it is and this is why we're not talking about it. And, this is, and, and maybe, I don't know if there's some sort of cautionary tale we could attach to it, but there may be something we can talk about you know, in, in the list there to, to figure out how we want to tackle that problem. Um, those are the folks. So right now we've got a draft posted. Um, there's a couple sections that probably need, oh, yes, Charlie.
Um, you know, I don't know if we cover... I'm trying to think if we've got a section in there that actually... That, I mean, that's kind of basic interop stuff to make sure that like the, the external peer can support, particularly if you're the guy running it. Running it. But, um, you know, it may not be a bad thing to have in there. I'll, I'll have to look back through the doc and see if we've got it in there. Yeah, so the goal really is, it's, it's really eBGP. Um, and we've got IE in there simply to kind of like just point, it out, point out what it is. Um, but yeah, eBGP is really the thing because that's the one where you have to play nice with people um, or hope that someone else is playing nice with you. But, you know, trust but verify kind of stuff. That's where the filtering and all that stuff starts coming in. So current status, draft is posted. Um, there may be some rough patches grammatically, things like that. I, I, I'm, even if you're not a BGP person, but you really like reading um, broken English and difficult documents, it'd be I'd appreciate the support for you know for just basic kind of editing, you know, detecting nits, putting commas in places, things like that. that that's that's helpful because ultimately you know the, these documents need to be able to stand on their own. Um, and if you are interested in BGP just generally uh, and you do it all the time, that's really helpful too because you probably have you know, copy and paste templates, things that you've done, whatever it, whatever it is you've done over your entire career, there's probably some piece in there, particularly when you get into the testing and validation, that will help get this document to where we need it to be. Um, also, Aaron's gonna get deeper into this, or maybe Chris is, I don't know who's gonna talk about it, but um, there's a handful of different um, NOGs out there that are working towards a common document. You know, we're all, we're all doing a similar thing. Um, everyone kind of sees like, Peering is kind of a thing that we have to do to make the internet work, so maybe we should write something down. And now that's been said, not only in English, but in Japanese, Polish, and a couple other different languages. Um, and also, there, there was an IETF effort a couple years back to create a BCP um, that kind of died on the vine. Um, but yeah, we've talked to those guys, and, and they're actually interested in, in participating in this thing as well. Um, so that doesn't mean we're definitely going the IETF direction with it. But we definitely have a handful of guys who've, who've thought about this problem previously, and we're going to start folding some of their documentation into this thing here shortly, I think, potentially. So, you know, join us. Like what Yardell Sell says, I mean, it's, it's pretty flexible. A handful of the guys wanted to have a sync up call. We do that. It's not required. I mean, we just pretty much, you know, shoot emails back and forth. I've got a Google group going um, so we can kind of do our stuff, collaborate, et cetera. And uh, that's about all I got. Any questions? Wonderful. Thank you all. All right. I'm going to have Sean come up to talk about uh, public peer and exchange participants, uh, BCOP. Hello. My name is Sean Xiao. Um, I'm a shipper for the public peering exchange participant BCOP. This is primarily an update of an existing um, rectified BCOP. I uh, just feel like there are some focus that we want to refocus on more on participant side, and there are a couple of items we want to add to uh, the BCOP. Um, so the primary difference between a public peering exchange and the typical transit provider relationship would have is most likely is it's a layer two, it's a large layer two environment, and there are policies and procedures that you would not allow, or uh, IXP would not allow you to do certain things, for example, the handling of the, the prefixes covering the, the exchange. So those are kind of the two main focus um, of this BCOP. Um, one of the big questions is how do we handle the routes, the prefixes, right? How do we advertise it? Uh, different approaches has different trade-offs and how do we um, describe the trade-off concisely and make recommendation of what's the best things to do when you are in certain situation. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of common practices that you borrow from the general EPGP configuration side. Uh, so there will be cross-references and sharing of contents there. So here's, I really, here's where I really need help. <laughs> so we have a document, uh, primarily from, um, from before. Um, there are some bullet items that we have already updated, but really need SMEs to come in and help. 
Um, I would love to chat with you um, if you do public peering. Uh, raise your hand if you do public peering or managing the operation of that. Yet there's a lot of people here. I really love to talk to you guys and see um, what we can do to make this better because for me, managing a public peering relationship and a transit provider relationship are very different, right? A transit provider, if they screwed up, I can yell at them. Public peering, not so much. By the same time, we're also dealing with very, very different uh, group of people who's, who operate at different scale, operate at different kind of uh, sense of urgency, right? So we don't want things to get uh, disrupted in our production environment just because none of us are following the best practices. So here are some of the outlines that we, we kind of added into the existing one, primarily focusing on how we deal with the IXP policy. We don't want to accept IXP policy, in, uh, IXP prefixes in general from other places because that's not a good thing to do. Um, and in terms of resiliency, BGP resiliency, in terms of the BGP timer and BFD, the best practice of how to configure that, how to work with your peer on that. Um, and finally, it's traffic engineering and then management of uh, peering in multiple locations. Um, I've seen a couple of weird things, depends on who you peer with. So those are, I think, are unique in the public peering exchange environment that are, you generally may not run into in a B BGP typical, say, transit provider environment. Um, two of the primary areas that I really want to focus on are um, focusing on the handling of the IXP prefixes. So we can make a recommendation there. At the same time, uh, find a good way to integrate with the typical or uh, more general EPGP configuration. Next step, really, really, really want to find some SME to come in and help. Um, I'm hoping we'll be able to do something quickly in the next month or so. Uh, we'll be able to reach a state where we can send it for uh, candidate BCLP. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? Excellent. Um, next up is going to be Mark with uh, the Ethernet OAM BCP, BCOP. Hello, I'm Mark Hawkins, and I'm shepherding the uh, Ethernet OAM BCOP. I'm also writing, and uh, it's me. Uh, so we are aiming to provide insight into Ethernet OAM. We don't think it's very commonly deployed, or at least well understood. Um, We'll try to capture the best current operational practices as well as uh, maybe some emerging practices, like maybe you know, running LFM in your core. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, uh, something you run in the last mile. Um, okay. The background uh, is basically what I just said. Uh, we don't think it's well understood outside of the service provider community, and I think even within our community, I, I see lots of eyes glaze over when I bring this topic up. So participants are uh, myself, Wojtek Kozak from Comcast, um, JF, who I can't remember the company he works for, he's a CTO somewhere, and myself. Uh, they are both not here today, so. So this is the current outline. Um, I did kind of, I, I had wanted to break these out and make a bunch of individual BCOPs, but it kind of didn't work out that way. Uh, a lot of the general stuff kind of got weeded in with the other topics, so I'm keeping it as one document for now. But uh, we cover the, kind of like what Mike was talking about, we, we do kind of try to educate and bring people up um, to the level where they can understand why something is the best current operational practice. So we uh, go through LFM, or link level OAM, service layer, and uh, did not even attempt ERPS because I don't know anything about it and no one has uh, volunteered to be a SME. So if, if you're an ERPS guy, come talk to me. So uh, most of this stuff is complete. The orientation, the link level, I don't think we'll be changing too much. Uh, service layer, there's just so much to cover with the service layer. I'm not sure when to call it done. Um, we did a lot, of, a lot of the fault management. The performance management is definitely lacking. We only have a few of the PDU types covered. Um, so if you have a experience with the performance management and some of the more exotic PDUs, it would be great to hear from you also. Uh, so before ratification, I want to at least get to 80% with uh, the service layer and I ERPS again. I'll, I'll be needing a SME for that. So uh, 
continue SME recruitment. We're doing that right now, right? Uh, compile feedback received. And by the way, I would appreciate all feedback, commas, uh, grammar. I'm, I'm not a writer, so that would really help. Uh, complete service layer, EOEM, and then I will wikitize the document. So get involved. Um, it's not it's not going to you know make your career being involved here, but it will really help me out. So that would be nice. <laughs> uh, any questions? Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, another BCOP that I'm not actually actively working on right now. Um, it's in progress. It's it's the draft. This is one that the draft hasn't been po posted yet, um, because it's a security related topic. Um, there's kind of a, a fairly decent group of security experts working on it in, in closed room first to make sure that it doesn't uh, isn't completely crazy, and then it's going to be dropped uh, on the wider audience um, probably within the next few weeks or so. Um, I know there's some reviews going on. It's being tossed around for reviews amongst kind of the security community right now, um, and this is basically something that's uh, taking. BCP 38 and, and doing a couple of things. One, really looking at the practical aspects of how do people actually do this on their networks. The folks who have deployed anti-spoofing filters on their actual networks, how are they actually doing it? Not just what does it say are the options in BCP 38, um, but you know, again, practically, how are people actually doing this? How has it worked? How has it not worked? Um, and also looking at a little bit wider scope. Um, it's not just ISPs, which BCP 38 is basically targeted strictly at ISPs. Um, and this BCOP is going to look at um, both ISPs, but also enterprises and IXPs, and kind of the gamut of, of how do you do anti-spoofing protections on your network, regardless of what kind of network it is, right? Um, and again, this one is one that really excites me because, again, if going back to the, the DDoS, right, I mean, there's not much you can do once you're under a, a denial service attack or a or distributed denial service attack, but if everyone were stopping spoofed addresses, we'd see a huge reduction in, in spam and denial service attacks. I mean, that, it's, it's really as simple as putting these filters in, so, so hopefully this um, gets some traction once we get it pushed out, and, uh, and definitely keep a look for it. Right now, um, like I said, there's a rough draft completed. It's being vetted within the security community. Um, feel free to send an email, uh, and again, in all, on all of these, right? So, so all of the drafts, except for this one, are all posted on the wiki at bcop.nanog.org. You can also click through from the main website, just click on the BCOP link. They're all, all the drafts are posted there, um, and we have a mailing list, um, I think it's just bcop at nanog.org, bcop-support. It's on the website. Yeah. So it's just bcop right, at, at nanog.org, I think. Um, but it's definitely on the on the website. On, at, if you go to bcop.nanog.org, the email address is right there, and it's bcop.nanog.org, which makes sense. Um, bcop at nanog.org, sorry. And if you shoot an email there about any of these topics or new topics, um, we're all monitoring that list. And then everyone who's on the list, obviously, I mean, the whole idea is for it to be a discussion forum there. So that's the the in progress BCOPs we have uh, within the Nanog region. And I'm going to really quickly kind of go through a little bit about how this BCOP effort is expanding globally. Um, there's a link at the top here, uh, internetsociety.org slash deploy360 slash about slash BCOP. Um, if you go to the deploy360 site at Internet Society, you'll be able to find this pretty easily. Um, and there's a whole page that has status, current status, fairly current status on all of the efforts around the world. Um, just looking really quickly here, in, in, uh, in Africa, there's a BCOP group that's been started. They are working within the AFNOG mailing list right now, and in kind of early phases, there's been a couple of birds of feather meetings at the last two AFNOG meetings. AFNOG meets once a year, so um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's ongoing. Two meetings is actually means they've been meeting for two years, so it's fairly significant. They'll be meeting again, uh, I believe, at the LACNIC meeting in Mauritius um, in November. And uh, Douglas Yango is, is right now leading that effort, along with some support from the Internet Society, and, and that's all kind of rolling. There is one, uh, well, we can do that. Um, the Asia BCOP Task Force, um, there hasn't been a region-wide Asian BCOP effort started yet, um, but within JANOG at the Japanese Network Operators Group, they've started to kind of convert one of their existing document streams into a BCOP track where they're going to start publishing um, new documents. And one of the focuses there, the reason it's hyper-localized is in Japan, they mostly speak Japanese, unlike a lot of other countries where a lot of engineering works gets done in English, in Japan, most of it gets done in Japanese still, and so having their own 
group for BCOPs, even if it's just translating out of region BCOPs into Japanese um, is really helpful for them. And then also um, NZNOG, the New Zealand NOG, is starting an effort locally as well. And we're hoping to get a whole region effort started. Um, it's one of the reasons I go to Asia a lot right now. Uh, Europe has, uh, within RIPE, there's a BCOP um, task force which was created. It's co-chaired by Benno Overrider and Jan Zors, and they're on their way to creating documents. It's an official part of RIPE now um, as a task force. Because RIPE already has task force and working groups for a bunch of different topics, one of the main purposes of the BCOP task force is to identify documents that should be written, and kind of hand those ideas off to the working group, so say the IPv6 working group or the DNS working group or, or whatever working group it falls under within RIPE. Um, so kind of just a, a, almost a secretariat for these documents through the normal RIPE document process. In Latin America, uh, another BCOP task force is underway there. Again, a few birds of feather meetings. Um, I believe they have a mailing list set up, and uh, Luis Balbino and, and Pedro Artores are involved, as well as a lot of the LACNIC and LACNOG folks that you may know if you ever travel down there. Um, and again, that's one that's kind of just gets, getting ramped up. They're right now working on their development process, so how do we put together documents in that region? And obviously, North America, um, you're here, you've seen what we're up to right now. Um, going a little bit deeper, I'm not gonna go too far into this, um, but one thing I do want to mention is that in, in Africa right now, there is actually an AFNOG BCOP document in progress, which is taking a local look um, at specific things with, I believe it's a IPv6 deployment specific to Africa kind of thing, because there's some, some strangeness there with, with some things that have been put together. So they're already developing a document. Um, right, here's some links to the RIPE stuff. They have a couple of documents in flight. One is a troubleshooting kind of checklist for IPv6 troubleshooting for help desks. So the idea is this is a document where you could hand it over to your you know, first line customer support or second line or whoever's the ones who actually answers questions um, and it start, have it be a base template for where to start, right? And then of course your network, you're gonna have your own little th things to, and tips and tricks to try. Um, but the basic list of if IPv6 isn't working at somebody's house or somebody's business, you know, what are the things they should check to go through to figure out why. Um, Lacknog BCOP, I think I talked about almost all of this. Um, again, the main thing they're working on right now is the development process, which is, you know, just how do they actually write documents, vet them, publish them, go back again to the life cycle. Um, again, it, Asia we're kind of waiting on. We've been talking about this in forums all over the world. Um, so this is just kind of a quick list of places where we've had conversations about BCOP efforts. Not all of them have started BCOP efforts yet, but this is something that's definitely spreading. Um, I think everywhere I go to talk about it, people are really interested and really excited. And the, then the shortfalling is, you know, not all of us have all the time in the world to just go write documents for free on the side. Luckily, quite a few people do. And at least if you can commit a little bit of time, it makes a huge difference. Um, as you can see, you know, when we get five or six people writing a document, um, you know, everybody writes a paragraph or two, really, when it, when it comes down to, um, you know, or, or, or edits in some things or, or, you know, adds some links. And it doesn't become a huge workload, typically. Speaking of that, we have a page up that I'm gonna actually check out real quick here, maybe. There we go. Um, so this is the list of appeals on the Nanog website. The way Nanog set up our development process is that, there we go. Um, the process starts with an appeal. So anyone can say, ask a question. What is the best current operational practice for this? Um, for example, um, Trace route, or um, route server filters at IXPs, right? Or um, login requirements per country. Not as relevant in the U.S. because we, only, you know, in Nano, we only really have to deal with the U.S. and Canada, but in a lot of other places in the world, this is a huge problem. If you're running a multinational ISP, the login requirements themselves are just hard, hard to keep track of. So these are all appeals. These are questions that we think the community has asked that folks want an answer to, and we're not saying there's not an answer. We're saying that there's no one has written it down in this format. Um, some of these can be answered really quickly because somebody did write it down somewhere already, and all we really need to do is just you know, link it together, pull it together. Some of them have been written down several times, and we just need to figure out the differences, right? Synthesize what's actually the best current actual uh, operational practice versus the different versions for different areas of the world or, or, or different companies or whoever wrote the documents. Um, and, and one thing I really want to point out here is, while we do have a, a committee that's you know, chartered with pushing this effort forward in, in, in North America within the Nanog region and keeping everything moving. And right now, everyone you saw who presented a document in progress happens to be a member of the committee. That's not the way we expect this to go. That doesn't scale, right? Eight of us can't f 
fill out and write all these documents within any kind of reasonable time frame. So we really want people who are excited about one of these topics or their own topic to step up. And um, there's several ways to do that. Let me switch back to the slides here. Cool. Um, which is, uh, you know, so one thing is, is, is just ask the appeal, right? Just come to the, the BCOP at nanog.org mailing list and ask your question. Um, or if it's something that you really, you know, if something's already on that list, a new idea, whatever it is, you can volunteer to Shepherd. And a Shepherd doesn't necessarily have to write anything. The Shepherd's job is to go find subject matter experts and be the whipping boy, right? Send emails, make phone calls, send text messages, find them in the halls at meetings, and make sure that the SMEs are actually contributing, and then maybe help edit it together. Um, you can be a shepherd and a SME, right? Or you can be just a SME where you're adding content, maybe something you've already written, maybe you have internal documents you can cut and paste parts from. I mean, a lot of this isn't super hard, because again, the idea is we're writing down best current operational practices, so none of it should really be new. It should be stuff that, you know, at least somebody knows. Um, and with that, uh, I'd like to roll it over to uh, the open mic. Does anybody have any comments, questions, or um, ideas, thoughts? Yeah, please. Can you find a lot of commonality across the region? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the question was, are we seeing lots of, of similarities between the regions? Because um, again, you know, we probably don't want to see different BCOPs for Latin America versus North America. Um, and yeah, I, I agree. This is the internet, and hopefully it works pretty much the same everywhere on the planet. Otherwise, we're, we're doing something wrong, right? I mean, the, the whole idea was interoperability and, and, and a network of networks. So yeah, so there should be commonality. Right now, um, so if we roll back in history, right, the original uh, idea was to have one BCOP effort globally. And that just it doesn't, didn't quite get off the ground. It's really hard to pull that off. And so we stepped back and let um, efforts kind of spur up regionally, um, which allows for working, right? So we have the same language, we have the same time zone, we're close to each other, we come to some me same meetings. So this group finds it easy to work together. But I agree that the long term question there is, is how does this all tie together at the top? We haven't gotten quite to that point yet. Um, there are a number of us watching what's happening and making sure that there is coordination between the groups right now. Eventually, I think there's going to be some kind of, a, there, I, I believe there needs to be some kind of official secretariat where we're vetting documents, probably a, a, um, you know, a board or a council or something similar to the NRO where representatives from each region can vet the documents and say, yes, you know, we all agree this is fine, um, or that, you know, that this is not fine, but best. Yeah. Please. Hi. Um, I Chris Woodfield with Twitter. Um, I noticed that the um, a lot of the documents are in a, are are maintained in a wiki format. Um, are they publicly editable? Does can just can one just register for an account and make updates to the draft documents, or is that to be handled by administrators? Um, so you do have to get an account just for spam prevention right now. But okay. really, if you just email the list and say, "Hey, I want to contribute," you'll get an account. Okay. We just don't want it open completely because <laughs> obviously wikis when they're completely I open get messy it. pretty fast. Okay. Um, also, each document is kind of worked on by the group that's working on it, and so a lot of them are, are either using like a Google Doc or a Word Doc they're emailing around, or something on GitHub, or you know Etherpad, or whatever it is. And the main thing is we just want to keep the wiki updated so that everyone can tell you know the status of the document. But a lot of the work may not even happen on the wiki. And when they're done, when they're published, they're all published in both the wiki format as well as like a PDF, so you can just download it, print it out, whatever you need to do. Um, anything else? He's going to go check the site and volunteer to uh, work on a document. Everybody. Everyone? <laughs> right now. Anything else? We're pretty early. All right. Um, well, thank you. If there's no other questions, I won't uh, hold you here any longer than we have to. I think there's a social in about 30 minutes, so maybe a little splash of water on the face. Thanks, everyone.